Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me here today. If you're new, I'm Amanda. Welcome to the channel where we are all about shattering the mental health stigma. If you haven't already, before we continue, make sure you make sweet, sweet, sweet love to that subscribe button so you're not missing any of these song reactions, any of my vlogs about my mental health journey, or any of my celebrity interviews about their mental health journeys. Now, if you know that I live in Arizona, you might be asking why I am wearing a jacket today when it is probably roughly about 115 degrees outside, and my short answer is anxiety does some weird stuff. We're actually just talking about it over on my Patreon live stream for the month. All of my Patreons get to come in and chat with me, ask me whatever, and that was one of the questions is why aren't they wearing a jacket? That is the answer. But if you want to be a part of these live streams moving forward, you want to make song reactions and get priority uh, responses, you want to ask me literally anything, you want to ask my celebrity guests different questions, make sure that you check out my Patreon. You can also see what I'm up to with my mental health outreach and of course, be a part of that journey and that outreach. So I'm gonna link that in the description below. Today's re reaction is a request from my longest standing Patreon, Boney Chuck. Thank you so much for requesting the song and for supporting me from the very, very beginning. Uh, today we are doing Chandelier by Sia. Obviously, I am getting quite familiar with her now. I get quite a few requests for her uh, from my Patreons or from those of you here in the comments. So I'm getting more and more familiar with her. I know a little bit about her backstory that she has struggled with uh, different mental health issues. So I... I'm not completely going in blind, but I have never heard this song, so I'm excited to check out a new one by Sia. Yeah. Yeah, you do. I'm the one for a good time call. Phone's blowing up. Bring up my doorbell. I feel the love. I feel the love. How does she do that? So I'm curious when she says swing from the chandelier if she is referring to, oh, that free party girl or if she's referring to suicide because I can kind of see if she is saying, if she wants people to think that she means having fun and cutting loose by swinging from the chandelier, but at the same time, really inside she's feeling broken and she's contemplating suicide. Obviously this is a reference to, I'm not sure if it's addiction or alcoholism. She said a, a drink, so I'm assuming alcoholism, but I can see the parallels also with addiction where, I mean, I guess it all kind of falls into the same category in many, many ways where you, you feel like you're totally unstoppable. You feel like there's nothing on earth that could take the pain away other than this vice, than this unhealthy coping mechanism and then you kind of get hit with it. The next day you get hit with the guilt and the shame and all of the physical side effects that come with coming down and that's a very harsh reality, but I don't know when she says swing from the chandelier if she's talking specifically about suicide or if she's talking about that party girl facade that we put on because people think that when you're when you're a party person like that, you're fun and you almost feed on that feedback because you, you you put out this energy, you put out on this mask and you become this different person. And because people jive with that energy, they're giving you validation and then it just kind of worsens the situation. It perpetuates the cycle. I'm gonna re rewind a couple seconds here. Here comes the shame, here comes the shame. 
love this girl. She's so random, I love it. I know what it's like when all you can do is you're in that survival mode and you're living like that moment's the only moment because that's really all you can do, that's all you've got. And in your mind, consequences don't exist at the time because you're in survival mode. And that's so powerful because I think that that can be true even without the vices, even without the addictions, that can be true just with depression, that you'll do literally anything at all to just get through the moment, to get through that time. And you wanna feel free, you want to fly away, but you feel stuck. And you're, you're kind of in this never ending cycle that first you are trying to escape the pain that you're feeling, and then once you numb that pain with XYZ vice, whatever your vice is, be it self-harm or drugs or alcohol, sex, gambling, whatever, once you do that and you come to, you kind of come out of that cycle the next day, then you're trying to escape all the shame and guilt you feel and it's just a never ending cycle where you're trying to escape yourself. And I really love her interpretations i really love her movements and her and her dance and her faces and stuff because i think that again i know i said this in the other video but it just it really gives a face to the randomness of anxiety and depression and all the things that are in my head because i could have 17 different conversations going at the same time 17 different thoughts 17 different scenarios playing out in my head and they're all just so random that if, if it was personified it would probably look like this I feel like she's trying to at the end there curtsy and say, okay, I'm done. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. And in my mind, every time I did that, every time I would self-harm, every time I would use uh, when I was doing cocaine, I was that same way. Okay, I'm done this time. Okay, I'm done. And I'm done. But the, it, it just cycled and it went on and on and on. And I don't know if she's curtsying you know, to say, okay, I'm done now, or if she's curtsying to put on that face for other people, you know, to say, here I am, I'm beautiful, I'm, I'm elegant, I'm, I'm all of these things. She's trying to pretend she's something else. But another powerful Sia song, uh, I, I definitely get a lot of the underlying messages, a lot of the underlying themes. I was worried when she was talking about swinging from a chandelier that that's where it was going to go. I'm really glad today that that did not happen because I'm just really struggling a lot in my own world, in my own, uh, in my, with my own mental health. Glad I didn't have that imagery today. But like I said, I don't know if that's what she was really talking about or if she was talking, I remember what, there's a Clint Eastwood movie, uh, Any Which Way You Can, where he's trying to show off for the girl and he's literally swinging from the chandelier. So honestly, that was the first uh, thought that went into my mind and then I realized, oh, Maybe it wasn't meant to be interpreted like that. And then the more the song went on, the more I started thinking, I think that she was talking about, unfortunately, uh, ending her life. And I'm glad that that was not the, the finale of this video. I'm glad that she survived. And obviously I know now that Sia did survive her own demon. She did overcome a lot as far as uh, 
as far as addiction and stuff, I know that she had her own battles, and I'm glad that she overcame that, but the, the just keep your, your glass full, uh, that one's hard. That one, that one's probably the hardest thing to think about just because you do feel like you just have to keep just a little bit more, just a little bit more, whatever your, your drug of choice is or alcohol or whatever, you just feel like, okay, just a little bit more to get me by, just a little bit more to get me by. And it, a little bit more is never a little bit more, is it? Uh, I, I know I've said this before, but I overdosed on cocaine and I just told myself it was because I did a little bit too much. I just did too much. I just need to regulate myself. But that wasn't the case. The case was is I had a problem and I didn't want to come to terms with it because I didn't know what else to do without that crutch, without that coping mechanism. Because as dark as it was, it did its job. It got me through um, until it didn't. And that's the tragic thing is the next day always does come. There's always the day that we have to face. There's always the guilt and the shame that we have to face with these sorts of things once we come down from the alcohol or the drugs or the rush of the dopamine after we self-harm once we come down from that we do have to face reality and that can be really hard and i just want you guys to know that you're not alone it, it, it it's a very real thing and if you are struggling please make sure to reach out make sure that you're not trying to go through this alone and you don't have to rely on these vices there are other ways i promise there are other things that can get you through it and I feel like I'm kind of saying this to myself today too. I just want you to know that this is also a self reminder. I'm saying this out loud as a self reminder. You can't get through these things. I can get through these things. We'll get through these things together, right? But as always, I encourage you to leave your stories here in the comments. Let's talk about our mental health. Let's keep this conversation going. Let's shatter the stigma. Uh, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe here. And I love you guys so, so, so much. Mwah.